Hi, Brian Jackson here. I'm the editor of itbusiness.ca and I'm down on the show floor at IBM Interconnects. I'm with a fellow Canadian here, Shell Gostad. He's the Vice President of Cloud at uh, Vantrix. And uh, not only are they an IBM customer, but they're also collaborating with IBM in some interesting ways. And uh, they have some cool video technology that I wanted to show off today. So, welcome, Shell. Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, we're very excited to be here at IBM Interconnect. It's a great show, lots of uh, interesting dialogue with uh, partners and with IBM folks. Um, basically, we are showing our uh, video transcoding services in the cloud. Um, there's many use cases of that. We have a long-standing history doing video uh, processing, transmission, and uh, today we're showing a whole bunch of different use cases that I can brief you quickly on. That's great. So, uh, the, to, to be clear, the core problem that you're solving for your clients is video processing and transcoding. Uh, getting my video stream from my source to any device that my client might want to watch it on. That's right, and uh, so our vision is really to move any uh, camera ingest or capture into the cloud, processing it there, including the transcoding piece, and then streaming it out to any mobile device, any, any kind of device. That's our vision uh, for, for our video transcoding services. Okay, and tell me, how are you collaborating with IBM? So we worked with IBM quite some time, um, and we have uh, put our software basically into soft layer, or IBM Cloud. Uh, runs efficiently there, we're OpenStack based, so it's good uh, alignment with that. We love the fact that it's a global service with many, many data centers across the world globally and the latency uh, delay between those data centers is very, very low. So we could actually move a video frame or, or data packet from here to anywhere, including we've done tests in uh, Tokyo, Japan, in 250 milliseconds, which is really, really awesome. Good. Now, uh, you're not just transcoding video, you're looking at doing some innovative stuff in terms of what you can provide for a broadcast. For example, earlier you were showing me this virtual reality demo, uh, taking a Ultimate Fighting Championship match, where we were watching it as if we were sort of hovering above the ring, and uh, you could move, move your head around wearing a headset and see the fight taking place as it moved around the ring. So tell me about your collaboration there. Exactly, and we, we, we do the same as we do for a video basic transcoding where we uh, run it in software in the cloud. We have a Bluemix service as well, which is more for developers. Um, but basically, there's many use cases, including sports. We worked with a lot of sports leagues, broadcasters, content providers, um, to move into what we call virtual reality. So with our partners, we are able to uh, capture video in 360. Um, and push it into the cloud and stream it out from there to any mobile device, including full virtual reality devices where you can, like you were explaining, and we can show that in terms of you move around uh, either with a device on, uh, on top of your eyes or a little bit less sort of virtual reality where it's, we call it light VR, where you have it on a tablet or a mobile device. And you can move the tablet or mobile device around and move inside the larger video footage or actually move it with your finger as well. So the point being that you're in control of your own experience. You decide where to look. The main action can be in that direction, but you could actually look somewhere else. So it's a great second screen experience where you decide how to integrate with what's being shown. We have overlays of virtual scoreboards and banner ads that are smart as well on top of that to sort of complement uh, the whole basic experience of you're in control yourself. So that's a great sort of entertainment application, but you also have a business application here for video conferencing, and it uses the same type of camera that captures everything uh, around it at 182 degrees, actually, even better than 180 degrees, just a little bit. So tell me about that solution. So it's very interesting because video conferencing today um, can be a little bit flat experience, right? And we, uh, our idea is to, to work with partners like IBM to move this into a little bit more immersive um, without being too, too much. Um, basically what you can do is you, you, you get closer to the audience. Uh, for example, we have a, a demo where we can split the screen in four quadrants and it zoom in on each speaker in the room and then becoming more immersive because 
instead of actually being there, you could miss, uh, if you're just on a phone call, for example, you could miss a lot of non-verbal uh, cues. Uh, people speak in gestures. I'm trying to sort of gesture to, to show that. But those things can be adding a level of uh, intelligence to the conversation. And to, so the second best to, thing to actually being there is doing this in virtual reality because you will be uh, almost being there yourself. Hence, you don't miss those nonverbal cues. Joel, thanks so much for telling me all about this today. Some fascinating solutions here at uh, the Vantrix booth. So wrapping it up, uh, I'm Brian Jackson for ITBusiness.ca, reporting from IBM Interconnect. Mm -hmm.